channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, today's going to be a slightly controversial video, so if you don't want to hear a lot of controversy, I suggest you leave because this is going to be one of those ones where I'm going to give you my opinion and talk about someone in a somewhat negative way due to some of the facts available. And before we get into that, let me introduce myself. This is your first time coming. Hello, my name is Lewis Porter Jr. And today we're going to talk about what many people said about Guardians of Order, Mark McKinnon, didn't pay any of his freelancers. So is supporting his all-new Kickstarter, Anime 5E, wrong? So there's a lot going on with this. So first off, if you don't know, so there is a new Kickstarter that's going on called Anime 5E. It is available off of Kickstarter, of course, and you can check it out. It is 5th edition fantasy role-playing reimagined. Unleash your anime and mega fantasy adventure with balanced point-based approach to the world's most popular 5th edition RPG. And this has been on for a while. I don't know exactly how many days. Um, but it is going on all the way to, to April 22nd. Uh, their initial goal was to raise $10,000. And so far, as of today, Wednesday, uh, 6 p.m., well, 6.40 Eastern Standard Time, they have raised 284318 Now, while this is very, very impressive, uh, Mark McKinnon, I think I'm pronouncing his last name, McKinnon, who is um, the person behind this, his publishing company is, let me see if I get this right, uh, Discami, I guess it's Discami Publishing. This is their uh, sixth, um, yeah, their sixth Kickstarter. And it looks like I said, it's doing amazingly well. So you're saying like, so Lewis, what's going on? I don't understand, what's the problem? So apparently, due to some people well let me tell you how i first found about maybe about a week ago it feels like it's been a week ago a week ago i noticed a message going through one of my threads to one of my regular friends on facebook talking about this kickstarter and they mentioned that this person uh, mark mckinnon i'll just call him mark had not paid them for the freelance work they did with guardians of order guardians of order was his original company that got um i guess it's not always were destroyed it got dissembled uh due to some issues and several of the uh, freelancers were not paid. Apparently this had been a big thing. And with it, I mean, like I said, I heard about that and I saw that and I was like, oh, what's this? I didn't know about this. And I'd heard about Guardians of Order. They'd done some stuff in the past and you know, I heard some stuff about it, but I didn't, I didn't really know much about it. So then I said, okay, let me start digging deep into this and really see what's going on. And let me see, the first, to the first link I got to, this guy, Deep and complex very quickly. New edition of Big Eye, Small Mouth, and Silver Age Sentinels led by X-Guardian founder. And it's like, oh, this is on Ian World. And this is from April 29th, 2019. So two years. Uh, fourth edition Big Eye, Small Mouth game has been announced. Licensed from White Wolf. Uh, updated by Mark McKinnon. Additional writing by David Pulver. Sean D. Francis. Jeff B McClintock. I'm sorry, sorry if I mispronounced your name. And Jude McLaughlin. So this is something that was going to be done, and there's a big write-up, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. And I, and I put a link. There's a link for all this stuff down the bottom so you can read it at your own leisure. And you got, like, two posts into the replies. And the first post is from uh, Jay Louder. That's going to come back in a second. But we'll stay right here with this. McKinnon burned a lot of freelancers and business partners, including myself, when Guardians went under. For, for some, he refused to even give people totals owed so they could write off a loss to their taxes. He essentialized maximized the damage by the way he handled shutting down the company. Something I've seen in the intervening years makes me think he's any more self-aware or trustworthy. The press release fails to mention the Best Fiction Origins Award I won for Silver Age Sentinels Anthology Path of Blood. I wonder why. Now, we'll come back to Mr. Lauder a little bit later. This is the next one. Don't forget, he also can to take pre-orders for items he knew would never get released along with continuing to sell his titles for years on Drive-Thru RPG after losing the license for many of them, as well as other shady things that are simply beyond going out of business. McKinnon needs to stay away. Here's a good background thread on how many first-hand sources as well as, as Mark's not-so-convincing defense. And there's a link to this on Game Board. 
I'm not going to put that link in here. I've already got the link to the article if you want to read it. It it really, really gets more. And it just, you know, McKinnon's shadiness needs to be broadcast far and wide. Ian World to take a stance here and not just mention his awfulness in a throwaway last line. So, yeah. So, you know, people have talked about this since then. And it goes into a lot of detail of what he did and him not paying his people. Now, that was one of them. Continuing on, I found another one. Guardians of Order collapsed in 2006, owing money to numerous freelancers and businesses. This is from a Facebook post from James Lauder. See, J. Lauder? James Lauder. And I put that in. Actually, i got to go to this one again because I took it down. Um, give me one second. But this has all been kind of interesting and like, new for me. I, didn't, I knew something was up, but I didn't know this was up. So, you know. And then James on April 29, 2019, wrote this post on his, on his Facebook, which is linked below. I'm not going to read into it, but it's basically the same thing. And he goes in talking about what happened. And there's a lot of comments from people in this. I mean, there's there's enough comments and stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess, just looking at stuff, there's probably, it says 95 comments on this and 41 reshares. So this did get around. This is nothing new. I'm not saying anything against them. I'm not saying... Mark McKinnon did these things. I'm just reporting what I read from this information and making just some interesting notes for myself. And everybody I'm talking about this uh, is being linked in this, um, beneath this video, of course. So you can read this in more detail if you want to. Um, another piece that I found. Should I support Big Eye Small Mouth as a writer? I recently saw an announcement on drive through of a community content program for Big Eye Small Mouth for... Now, I've always wanted to write for Big Eyes, Small Mouth for almost two decades. I've run the game in the past, both as an online campaign and at cons, when I was running my own designs. And this would be a fulfillment of that dream. There's just one problem. Should I be supporting Mark McKinnon? I met him a couple times before um, Guardians of Orders imploded. I even sent him a thousand dollars for Seraphim's Guards money to publish through his Magnum Abyss program. Then he's come back with a new company and no word on whether the debts he incurred by Guardians are being paid off is controversial. I'm sure he may not have any nice thing to say about me either. So as much as I'd love to take the plunge, I am reluctant. I don't even own a copy of Big Eyes Small Mouth 4. I'm looking for some new products to write right now, period. I feel very uncomfortable about doing it. I don't even know if content for Big Eye Small Mouth has much of a market. My last open content book made its money back mostly through the way of Kickstarter backing. And this goes on, it continues, and people are making comments to it, and it goes on, and you can read more into this. So, you know, uh, I, you know I'm not going to lie. This is kind of one of those moments you go, okay, is this a good thing? Is this a good thing? This individual has not paid people for work that they did for him. He's made money off of it, and he's put it online, and he's selling it through, well, he's raising money through a Kickstarter. And now he's raised so much money that he could pay back the people that he owes. Now, the question you've got to ask yourself is, as a fan of role-playing games and a fan of freelancers and stuff, and a fan of people who've worked hard for this kind of stuff, You've got somebody else out there basically making another bunch of money on stuff or they kind of owe these guys this money. I don't know Mark well enough to give you a yay or nay to support him or not. I'm just giving you the information I have online that I found after like a few minutes of just simple Googling. It's it's a problem. As a publisher, it's a problem for me. So I'll, I'll tell you a little secret of mine. When I was doing my Kickstarter for Obsidian Apocalypse, I guess it's not really a secret, my wife was going through cancer and basically in the middle of the Kickstarter me finishing up she died and you know why it was a horrible time for me 2014 not a good year I was still able to get the project out by the end and I got all the copies out got everybody their copy everyone got theirs you know that's what I did looking back you know I know how difficult it was that's why I've been like oh I don't want to do another Kickstarter it reminds me too much of my wife but you know I, I got it out I paid everyone I was supposed to, no one had anything to worry about, and I'm pretty thankful for that. So when I hear stuff like this, like, oh, I just stiffed the bill and I ran, and I didn't and I never put anything back, I always wonder what that's like. Because you know, you know, it's 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 one thing 
just to be honest with people and say, look, I burned through the money. I don't have it. I'm going to try to see if I can work something out. And maybe just pay a little bit over time. So at least people would be like, you know what? He tried to do something. But to ignore people and be like, no, I'm out. Deuces. And then come back again in the same industry and then get this, you know, windfall of money based on this game. And people are like, yeah, this is great support. Well, you know, he's burned people in the past. Now, I don't know if he's going to burn the guys he's working with out. I don't know that. I'm not giving you that kind of quote. All I'm saying is people in the past have dealt with him. This has been their experience dealing with him. You should be careful. You know, you should be. I mean, it is a buyer beware situation anyway. But you've got to ask yourself the important question, like, what is going on with that? What is that? Why would someone do that? What's the purpose of that? I don't know about all that, but I do know that people were upset. Things didn't happen the way they're supposed to, and some people didn't get paid. So let's just go back to the original question again. Mark McKinnon didn't pay many of his freelancers, so is supporting his Kickstarter wrong? I don't know. I don't know if it's wrong. I do consider it to be inappropriate. But one person's inappropriate is one person's no big deal. So you make the decision, you tell yourself, if you think it's good to give money for this project, hey, do me a favor, comment below, tell me why. If you think you shouldn't give money for this project, please definitely comment below, and we'll go from there. Thank you so much for stopping by, I really appreciate it, and I will talk to you all later. Hey, thank you for checking out my channel. Do me a favor, check out my other videos, and if you like what you see, subscribe.